Hello and welcome to Quilt Addicts Anonymous. I'm Stephanie Sebbing. This is the final video in our Triangle Masterclass. This is technically a bonus video because you certainly don't have to quilt it like I did, but I wanted you to see a way to kind of do an epic quilting of a triangle quilt that takes the triangles into the quilting as well. We're gonna take a look at a play-by-play -play as I quilt the different quilt block areas. We've got the flying geese. We have the hourglass units, which are essentially the same size as the flying geese. We we have the half square triangles and then we have borders which I also put triangles into and just it's a lot of fun it is a whole lot of fun to do this and have it turn out I use white thread across everything because I wanted to be able to quilt one entire block at a time and not have to change threads and this video is also gonna kind of be like the definitive it is totally okay to press your seams open and then stitch right next to the ditch because I do it constantly it is all over every single one of these seams has been outlined on one side and like really really close to the seam sometimes right on top I do try to be right next to it and everything works out just fine in fact it works out better because your points are so flat that you can quilt right into the point without worrying about breaking a needle or blowing a fuse on your long arm I did use a ruler for this. I used an Italia Bonner 4-in-1. I really love her ruler. It's very versatile. I just used a straight edge for this one, and that works really well on the long arm. It's a little big for your home sewing machine. She does have other rulers available, though, that are a little bit smaller that you could do similar, get similar results with if you're working on your home sewing machine. So one other thing you need if you're going to be working on your long arm is a ruler base. So that is a big plastic part that slides onto your long arm. So that way your ruler isn't flip flopping to the side. It just gives you a nice flat surface to work on. So it stays nice and even as you're working. One other side note before we get to this. So my toddler, uh, ran off with my GoPro uh, batteries. So we are doing this kind of a POV standpoint using our regular cameras instead of the GoPro. I still have not located the batteries. I ended up having to buy new ones, but uh, we really wanted to get this done so we could start the series. So it's gonna be a little bit different than you're normally used to seeing. And I hope you guys enjoy it and you get that point of view. So let's go ahead and take a look at the quilting play-by-play -play, and I'll talk you through my decisions as I'm making them. And I forgot one more thing before we get into it. So our original fabric is long gone for this and we're not able to get more. This was a one and done fabric line. The Free Spirit is not reprinting it. So what we've done is we've created new quilts in digital colorways. So you can see one of them behind me, the fabric that we're using currently. They're really pretty. There's lots of really great options. Those are actually almost sold out too. You guys have loved this so much. But we want this series to live on and we want Want you guys to be able to take this at any time so we're going to be continually updating the kits that are available for raspberry sherbet we're going to do digital images whenever we get a new collection that we think would look great for it and then you guys are going to have options to choose from from now till the end of time so if you watch the series you've enjoyed it you would like to get something that you know is going to look really good together always go and check out the kit page because we're going to be continually updating that for you so you can get something that you love all right, let's keep on watching and we'll learn how to do ruler work and stitch next to the ditch when you have pressed your seams open. So the first thing I'm doing here is I am outlining that triangle and we'll see in a little bit that I am aligning that ruler just one um, quarter inch away because the part that goes around your needle when you're using a ruler foot is exactly a quarter inch away from the center of your needle at all times. So you kind of got to use to that. You can see real well that I'm just going straight down. So the first thing I did was outline the entire block. So now I'm outlining the smaller triangles. Those are the quarter square triangles that make up the double pin wheels. And I'm doing that center seam. I go in and then back out again. I just travel right over it so that way I can get that line um, to create the texture, but I don't have to worry about what's um, 
where to go from there as far as the travel goes. So now what I'm doing is I'm quilting in the triangle. So that is that tiny little triangle that you see here. And what I did is I just lined the tip of my ruler up about an inch, the inch line on there with the tip. So that way I was able to create that consistently throughout every single one. Now it doesn't matter which one you pick, you can do whatever you think looks good for you, but you do wanna be consistent so that they look like they have been quilted all the same when you're doing all of that size triangle. All right, so then I'm able to move on and just keep working down. So the first thing I did was obviously quilt my borders and go outline all of these. So I was able to get about three of them in the width that I'm able to work on for my sewing machine. And you can see there real well that my ruler was a little bit offset there. We're gonna see it a little better when we do the POV. So don't worry, that's coming. All right, so here I'm able to move on to that third one. And that way I can get that whole border done first. And I'm gonna try not to break threads as I go across. I'm gonna try to be able to do this all in one go as much as possible. That way you don't have a bunch of thread tails to deal with in the end. All right, so now that that outside border is done, I'm working on the inside. So what I'm doing here is I'm going from point to point and you can kind of see it on here too. So I'm starting down at one point <clears throat> and going up four inches to hit to the next point. Then I'm traveling up again and again. And that way I can create it as though there were triangles in this, even though it's just a nice straight of grain. I chose to do this for two reasons. One, I wanted to also have the look of the triangle in the border and sort of extend that out and look like I had a bunch of quarter square triangles in there. And the other reason is my ruler is not long enough to quilt all the way down. And I also wouldn't be able to get from the top to the bottom in one pass. So by jogging over and then working my way back down, you can see I've got a diamond almost done here. I'm able to break that up. So that way I don't have a bunch of really wonky lines where you can see where I stopped and started in order to move my ruler. So here I am working around to do those um, offsets again. All right, so now you can see I'm gonna make my way back down and I'm doing it a little bit different on this side. On the side going up, I just did one. And this one, I'm also going to do an inside part as well. So I've got it lined up. I'm quilting that inner triangle that you see right here. And then I'm going to quilt the inside part as well. So I'm able to quilt this part here where you've got like a diamond going uh, to the side there. and that sort of alternates on where I put those. Basically, I just wanted it to look like I had all those quarter square triangles and really get creative. But your path is really important here because you can see I went up one side just doing the right side of that triangle. And here I'm doing the left side of the triangle. So I'm able to go up and down to meet the edges. But here the path works because I'm going to come out to the center and then change my ruler so that I can go out to that right side again. And then I'm able to work my way back by lining everything up and quilting the rest of that little, it looks like a diamond, to make it out. And then I can keep going with the one that's on the left side. So really, you have to kind of think about your path when I'm redoing this because my path that worked for this quilt might not work for another quilt. So you really have to just kind of play with it and decide what is best for your situation. Usually whenever I'm filming these, it's not on the first pass because I'm trying to figure out what is my best path and I don't want to do that on camera. I am want to get it figured out and then show you guys. All right, so here's some POV of me quilting. So you can see that that ruler is one quarter inch away from the edge. And the first thing I'm doing here is I am uh, outlining the entire fine geese block. So 
I am stitching right next to that seam, as close as I can get to it. I'm not right on the seam, I'm right next to it, which is essentially what you do when you stitch in the ditch anyway. But the difference is, is there isn't a ditch because we press these seams open. And I have never ever had a problem with the hundred or so quilts behind me that have all been quilted like this with open seams with any of this. So if you're a member of the Quilt Police and somebody told you a long time ago not to do this, it's fine. You can see here that it's going great and it's going better than great because I can get right into those corners. All right, so here you can see I'm lining up with a three quarter inch mark on that ruler with that point. And then this takes a little bit of finesse because you kind of have to get used to that ruler being a quarter inch away from wherever it is you want to quilt. So here I've got it a quarter inch away um, from wherever I'm working. And that's easier to do when you're doing straight lines here. Here I'm traveling over a part that I already did to get to the top of that flying geese. And now I'm gonna stitch over and you're gonna see it, it's harder to do when you're doing those inner triangles that aren't outlining because you don't have like a clear way to know ex this is exactly where I should be. So here we go, we're gonna outline that and then we're gonna come around. All right, so now that my flying geese is totally outlined, we're gonna do those inner triangles again. And again, that quarter inch or three quarter mark of the ruler is even with that point. So I'm gonna stop about halfway. And now here is where I'm telling you, you've gotta, it takes some finesse to know like what angle you need to have that ruler at in order to be able to come right into the point. Now, if you're ever working on it and it's clear you, or you misjudged it and you're gonna be off, you want to move it slowly because then it won't be as obvious that you messed up and you wanted to, or you needed to do something else. So just keep an eye on that as you're working. All right, so here we're gonna see how I did all my half square triangles. Uh, whenever I had quarter square triangles, whether it was with the flying geese or the hourglass units, I quilted them that same way. So you know how to do that. And all I've done now is I've switched over to the next block and travel over to get there. And again, we're starting with outlining. That's the first thing that we do. And I've already outlined the side, so I don't necessarily have to get down to, to outline that, but it's nice to travel down to get to the point. And so for this one, I believe I was at one and a quarter lined up with that point of the triangle right here. And then I was able to do that section. And really what I should have done here, you can see me backtracking. I should have stopped there and I should have continued going around. And you can see, you could see there those lines really easily that it was right on top of that. And you kind of get used to how to flip the ruler around. For me, it's easiest if I have the ruler uh, to the left and above my ruler foot, I have an easier time doing that. All right, so here's that path. Again, I'm going now through the seam in order to get to the top. And that worked really well for me. Now I'm ready to quilt the next row. So I've gotten my whole row done. Um, we've picked up when I was in the center here. But now I'm ready to sort of work my way up and I'm gonna work my way over, going across and then up and over again. So this is just gonna be more of the same. We're gonna go ahead and do this in a little bit of fast forward uh, because it's nothing really new. Here you can see real well that that, it's actually it's a one inch is lined up with the point of that. So we'll wait, we'll see if we have some more really clear images of that here. All right, so that first flying geese is all quilted. We're going around. I probably will, yep, I'm gonna outline first. I always like to outline first because one, that I don't forget to do it, and two, it gives it really good definition of your piecing, and especially when we worked really hard to get everything nice, it's really good. All right, so the three quarter mark on that ruler is lined up, and now I'm coming into that point. Three quarter inch again is lined up with that point, and then we're coming back, so that's looking good. All right, so now the one inch line is lined up with the point of the large triangle for the flying geese, and then we're heading back in. So that was a really great view of what it looks like when you are looking down and you're quilting. Now this is obviously gonna be a little bit different if you're doing it on your home sewing machine because you are gonna be moving the ruler and the quilt and your machine is stationary. In this case, I'm holding the ruler steady and the quilt is steady and I'm moving the machine on the long arm. So it's a little bit different process, but we're gonna go ahead and let you watch this and fast forward for a little bit 
so you can kind of see how I'm moving the ruler around. And don't get uh, discouraged if you're not able to flip around with it as easily as I am here. I've been doing this for over four years. Um, using ruler work like this. So it takes time to get this comfortable with it and know the best ways to move around and how to place your ruler. So like anything, you just have to practice. So for this section, you're seeing uh, more of a view from the side of what it's like for me to move around the quilt and work on this. I thought it would be helpful to show you guys just so you can see how I navigate those paths. That way I'm able to do it without uh, breaking any thread. So what I was able to do here, what I typically did is I quilted the entire block and everything that I was able to do in that. And then I would do the uh, border separate. So I would do that on another pass and that usually took a couple of passes which hopefully we'll see a little bit later. But you can just watch me work my way around so you can get an idea of how you might be able to best create your path when you're trying to do something really fancy like this too. So for this section, I am actually quilting the border. So we're going to show you guys kind of how I work through that. So again, I'm doing that where I am going from point to point on those blocks. These are all four inch finished blocks. So I'm just going up and down, uh, matching from block to block as I go. And that's the points that I'm aiming for. And in some cases, I'm able to travel right on where the fabric is. So I'm basically going down, up, down, up, down, up. So that way I'm able to just travel, like here's the corner of a block, to here's the corner of a block, to a corner of a block, to a corner of a block, to a corner of a block. So I do that all the way down, and then I'm gonna need to do that a second time because I was able to go down, up, but now er, I need to go up, down for the second pass. All right, so here we are. We're doing the second pass here. So for this one, I'm hitting the other half. So before we went down, up. Now we're going up, down. That way I'm able to create essentially the outside of this triangle. So I'm pretending that I have a triangle here where I am quilting the different sections of, like I'm going through where the seams would be and creating that outline as though we had something like this going on. All right, so now we're on pass three. Pass one, we went down and up. Pass four, we went, or two, we went up and down. This time we're doing all the inner triangles. So I'm going up and down, up and down, up and down on the bottom row only. And I'm using the texture that's created here as my guide. So before we were using our triangles to line up the marks on our ruler with. For this one, I'm using the actual cross of the stitching threads as though that were my triangle guide. So that way I'm able to create this same texture that we have in all of our quarter square triangles because I've sort of created my own by doing that X stitching. All right, so now I'm about to start my fourth pass. 
Now for this one is when I'm gonna hit all of those at once. So that's when we're going to go down up and then also hit our diamond going all the way to the bottom of the sashing. And then I can hit my little triangle, do my diamond, and then my upper triangle and diamond. And just keep working my way across until I filled everything in. So this entire border took four passes going across in order to fill it in and make it look like this. And I did that because then I didn't have to have a lot of traveling stitches, which can add things look a little bulky. And also it eliminated all of the extra threads that I would have to come up with and, and cut otherwise if I was doing this a bunch. So which makes it a lot faster and it's a lot easier and better for your quilt in the end. So to recap, we started with pass one going down up and then we went up down going all the way across then we for the third pass we quilted inside those triangles as though they were quarter square triangles and then for pass four we're going to do upper triangle and then vertical diamond upper di triangle vertical diamond and that way you're able to make it all the way across without breaking your thread anytime as you go through All right, so here you're just seeing me quilt around in the bottom border and do more of those triangles. I'm quilting it the exact same way we quilted everything else. The half square triangles, I quilt the same way as you saw when I was quilting the half square triangles here. The quarter square triangles, I'm quilting the same way you saw when I was working in my flying geese. So it's nothing new, it just matters on how I travel around. And a lot of times what I do is I'm actually traveling in the seam allowance that's going to be at the edge of my quilt that'll be covered up by binding. All right, well, I hope you have enjoyed that quilting play-by-play. -play. Again, it's a little different than what we've done before because my GoPro camera batteries were missing and still are, but I purchased new ones. So, you know, so what happens when you have toddlers at work, they take things and they hide them and someday I'll find them and a horde of pacifiers all in one spot and all will be well in the world. But, uh, I hope you enjoyed seeing kind of how I worked around the quilt because that is sometimes a big challenge because we don't know how to get from one point to another without having to backtrack a ton, without having to travel a lot on our stitches. And then also the least we can break thread, the better because then you don't have to hide all those threads and risk them coming out later. And then also it just makes it go a lot faster. Um, I hope you got some good insights on how to do borders like this where, you know, it has a lot going on we have a whole big star going on in here but it was done very um, deliberately in four different passes doing specific things in each pass and same with the blocks you know we did one entire block at a time working through there and then also doing the borders uh, here the same way I did these so it's really a lot of fun I love ruler work. I feel like it makes me look like a lot better quilter than I actually am because once you get the hang of having that ruler foot in contact with your ruler at all times, you can do any shape you have a ruler for. So it's really, really slick and I really enjoy it. I hope you have enjoyed the Triangle Masterclass series. If you are just seeing this video, make sure you check it out. We covered seven different triangle tips and tricks. Uh, we've made four different triangle units. We had two videos on putting things together, both so that you never lose a point when you are assembling a block, and then also one on my two pinning method to make sure that all your points always come together when you have pinwheel blocks and things like this. We talked about minor borders, and now you got your bonus quilting video. Um, the pattern you can get on our website is Raspberry Sherbert, and you can follow along with this, or you can always just use the videos to follow along and learn the techniques for whatever quilt it is that you're working on. 
All of that is available over at shop.quiltatexonomous.com. We do have kits available using this really cool Fusion 2 line from QT. There's four different colorways right now. Some of them are getting pretty low in stock. And when those are sold out, we're gonna always keep releasing new ones. So if you find this video series three years from now, you're not gonna see any of these fabrics. You're gonna see some to be determined fabrics because they are probably not been created yet, but we'll keep updating that. So always check it out and join waitlist if we don't have any currently and we're, we'll try to keep them up always. But it's gonna be different fabrics all the time. So maybe you might wanna make a couple of these to really stretch your skill set if you really find that you love triangles. Well, thanks so much for following along and until next time, happy quilting. Cool